Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're going to step away from the older TVs and get into the late 80s. This is a 1987 Daytron 14 inch color TV. Yes, 14 inch, which is kind of strange. Let's forget what the model number is here, but it looks like a TCB415PN. Uh, anyways, this was a, a pickup. Uh, relatively inexpensively, it does work. Of course, now that I've said that, okay, there we go. So it does run. We obviously have some vertical troubles here. A little bit of a collapsed frame. The picture tube is uh, okay, but it is kind of dim. That's about as much brightness as we get out of it right now. And the vertical is beginning to shrink, as we can see, over time. So definitely some need for capacitors. Cool little channel indicators work here. Got a little bit of a red tint there. And we've got a dark fade to light, so that tells me that the B filters are starting to die in this thing. So what we're going to do is uh, tear it open. Check the necessary capacitors in the vertical and B-plus section, do some replacements, and then do some setup adjustments, and this thing should be good to go. So let's crack it open. And here we are with the back off. We can see that this is a pretty simplified television set here. Not sure what this is. Well, it's a little sliver of plastic. Somehow got in here. At least it's not metal, I guess. So this is much like very many of the 1980s TV sets. And it's just a big jungle IC back there, and that controls all the subsidiary circuits. It's kind of primitive. So where we're looking at, <clears throat> uh, I see back there that there's glue and electrolyte P there where that boost cap is. So that's probably bad. Just a good visual inspection sometimes is all you really need. This has uh, sets of capacitors that are known to P, including the Shangamo ones, which aren't really all that great. Let's flip it up and see what the board soldering looks like. Surprisingly not too shabby. It's not terrible. Could definitely use some soldering here down on the horizontal drive transformer. This is your vertical output IC here. This is your combination damper diode and horizontal out there. The big power resistors though, they all seem to have held up as far as their soldering is concerned. It's hard to tell from the camera, but all that looks really clean. Now, given the fact that the CRT was a little bit dim, I think I want to see if I have some way to put a tester on it. I might or might not have that adapter socket, but if I do, I definitely want to check the life of this thing before investing too much time into it. And there's our CRT there. Yeah, in case you're curious, uh, Daewoo manufactured uh, electronics and imported them here for a time. They also made god-awful appliances and pretty crappy cars, too, but... Uh, yeah, that's just kind of how that is. Well, it looks like universal adapter it is. And we're going to hook this up. See if we can adjust our voltage here. Still a little tired, but it does come up. Let's see if we can just give it a little cleaning cycle here. That's cool. So, yeah, the CRT appears to be in decent shape. Let's go down to 5 volts here and see what it does on 5 volts. Yeah, looks fine at 5 volts, so I think we're going to proceed on this one. And it uses surprisingly low heater current, too, so, yeah, it's kind of cool. Anyways, I'm going to guess that this switch on the neck board is probably for the service mode, but 
Now let's uh, get out the ESR meter and check some of these major caps here, these B-boost caps and stuff like that that are probably all trash. Okay, so I have circled all of the major electrolytics in areas problematic like B-boost and vertical sweep and power supply and stuff like that. And we're just going to check them over really briefly here. That one's a, still alive. That one's still alive. That one's still alive. And that one's still alive. And here's the B boost caps here. Huh. They still test okay. Interesting. So maybe there's either something I'm missing or some other problem that's causing the light to dark sweep there. Typically, that's a B filtering thing. Now, if the cap were leaky, it would most likely blow the fuse because that's going to be drawing a lot more current than it should be. Or maybe there's something here I'm missing. Got that electrolytic there. Did I miss that one? Which tests a little tired. So let's see where that 309 is. That's still in the sweep section, so that might be of importance to check that out. Yeah, that's a tiny value guy, like 0.47 microfarad, so I'm not going to bother changing him out. So although my ESR meter tells me that it's okay, I'm still not trustworthy of the, the B-Boost cap based on what I actually see on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and yank that, uh, just because there's a high probability that it's going to cause issues down the road. And uh, as a precautionary tale, I'm going to desolder the the vertical output caps and replace them too because it's just you know better to be safe than starry do it once and not have to take it apart again while you got it apart caps are cheap labor is expensive so i'm going to get to replacing the b boost caps and a couple of the uh, power supply and vertical out and then we'll we'll test it out again yeah, getting there got most of them in just going to do these two here all right so we got our caps in I'm just going to solder them up. The two down there that I haven't replaced are in a non-crucial area, so I'm just going to leave them be. I'm basically replacing the high failure rate parts, which although the ESR meter says is good, the picture on the screen tells me otherwise. So I'm definitely more inclined to replace these parts. Because typically when you see a shadow from dark to light, it's because the B-Boost filter is failing, so I figured I'd replace that. Because although the ESR meter says it's good, it's probably not. I'm just resoldering what looks a little tired. Got a vertical output I see here, why not? Okay. It's one little loose connection looking thing here. And then we'll fire it up and see what we still need to do to it. Which is probably going to be in the way of setup adjustments and grayscale and definitely the grayscale and then let's see let's touch up these two things here a little bit more okay there's what we've changed out. It's hard to really tell from this angle, but you can definitely see the new caps here and there. And... All right, let's hook the signal up to it and see uh, how good we can get it. Okay, let's turn it on, see what happens. Maybe it'll blow up, who knows.
All right, so we're looking like the same as we were before. Set maybe a little bit more symmetrical at least. Picture's a little brighter. We've still got a lack of vertical supply. <laughs> Let me just plug in a signal generator here. Really? Well, either the batteries have gone south, or our tuner doesn't work. Let's go ahead and try the regular box as a source. So it appears as though we have a dead tuner. sign of change whatsoever so we definitely either need to go find our tuner sub I have snow which you wouldn't typically associate with a dead tuner make sure this is all hooked up right it appears to be Mess around with the AGC control, but that doesn't fix anything. And that wouldn't be uh, too far off. As you can see, there's not even a registration between the two. So we need to figure out why we don't have a tuner. And we've still got vertical issues. Another thing of interest, if we unplug the tuner completely, we get a change in snow, but that's about it. And if I unplug it completely from the board, I wish I can't because it's soldered in there, but anyways, there's not a whole lot of change. So there could be two scenarios here. There could be a dead tuner, or there could be a dead IF section of the jungle I see, in which case uh, we've got a little bit of a conundrum. And if the jungle is bad, then we're kind of stuck. If the tuner is bad, well, you can substitute a tuner, but uh, finding one that will work in the circuit is a whole other thing. So I need to find my tuner subber. We seem to have fixed the light to dark problem, which is good. But until I can get a signal into it and figure out why the tuner isn't working, there's not a whole lot left to do here. Well, in case y'all were curious, I figured it out. What it turned out to be was uh, bad contacts. Even though I had sprayed it with contact cleaner, I opened up the tuner and I saw that the oscillator was not running. It wasn't getting proper voltage. But if I jiggled the tuner, I'd get little blips of it. Uh, unfortunately, that part of the troubleshooting was lost. Um, but yeah, I got the contacts cleaned up and now it's a working set. I just touched up the grayscale and things. Uh, the vertical centering is a bit off, but there's no way to easily adjust that. I suppose I could figure that out, but the set's really not worth my time. This is a very entry-level set, and there's not a whole lot that I'd want to do with it other than just pass it on to somebody else. But uh, it's running. I got the tuner cleaned up. I got the fine-tuning dialed in. It's got a little bit of noise, but that's because of interference here. Uh, if I plug my signal generator into it, it's a lot less. AFT works. Oh, really? Well, I, Sound I, I, works. I and I had to get the channel indicator to line up right because uh, it wasn't indexing properly. Um, but yeah, there it is. The little Daytron's alive. I like it when it's easy. 
I just wish I could have showed you guys the process. But in any case, yeah, this is just a been trying to recover the footage and it just wasn't having it so this is kind of where we're at so to sum up it was just snow uh didn't get a chance to find my tuner subber so i just went inside the tuner did some quick troubleshooting found the oscillator transistor which is usually adjacent to all the coils in case you're curious this was a 2sc 1730 it wasn't getting proper voltages uh, and if I jiggled the contacts on the tuner, it would kind of sort of come back. So I just used an aggressive cleaner like D100 uh, and just cleaned all the contacts and then it kind of came back to life. So anyways, sorry about the choppy video, but hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, more stuff to come.